I'm Richard Porter. And I'm Johnny Smith. And this is Smith & Sniff, a podcast in which two friends talk about cars and a little bit too much about shaking Stevens. I'm, I'm starting to feel Christmassy. Are you? And, uh, which is kind of convenient, really. And... Um, Heard that Shaking Stevens song the other day, and it, re- it reminded me of how funny the music video is. I forgot how jerky Shaking Stevens is. It's very jerky. Is he as jerky as Suggs? No. If it was like a bow, is it like is this like a Beaufort Suggs. scale of jerky? Yeah, <laughs> well, it's the Suggs scale, isn't it? It's the Suggs um, jerkiness. He's not as jerky as Suggs. Or maybe madness, Ian Curtis. Maybe it's the Curtis scale. Ian Curtis, yes. But but Ian Curtis is more jittery, I would say. Suggs is your angular movement king. <laughs> He's a sort book. of diagonal shoulders. Yeah, I I I am thinking Shaking Stevens. Actually Shaking Stevens might be a little bit more <laughs> like someone keeps licking a nine volt battery. <laughs> 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 well, while you're trying to sing a jolly Christmas song, he is so good. He's proper like whatever he is, Swansea spec Elvis. Yeah, and, um, oh yeah, it's a good song. But the girl who is, I think they filmed it in Lapland or somewhere. The girl that's in the sleigh with him in the video. You have to watch the music video. Honestly, it looks like you know when you, if you've you've been you've been hit in the face by a, a powerful fast travelling football on a really cold day and it smacks <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it hurts for so long thing. you know when it throbs yeah. it sort of throbs and glows that's what yes. that's sort of what her face looks like so I always get the impression there had been some sort of incident just before filming and she'd had to but pretend Shaking to- Stevens just saw a Gola ball on the floor couldn't help himself <laughs> absolutely howled it accidentally <laughs> towards his co-star's face and he didn't realise he was he did a proper like curler and it bent round it banana oh yeah a high yeah and it just it was carrying so much power mm. like real you know he's he sweet right foot on him old shaky oh completely he, and, and not only that it had been left outside um, for several nights in Scandinavia, so it had a, a hard crust of, of, of ice all over it. It was carrying extra weight, and I think that's what it did. It got her straight in the face, and then she was like, bollocks, I've got to do this Shaken Stevens <laughs> fucking music video. <laughs> anyway, great song, I, uh, great song, great song. I, I just looked up Shaken Stevens, he's still alive. He did. A, he made an album about two years ago, and I heard two tracks from it, and they were good. Really, I I kid you not. I'm not just saying this. I was I was I was pleasantly surprised. I thought, wow, he's gone away and kind of put. Yeah, it was before the pandemic. He puts put right. pen to paper and actually done some good shizzle. Fair play. I want to know um, what he drives though. I've got no idea. I was just going to say the same thing, and because I've got in my head, I think that kind of spec of old school entertainer, yeah, who achieved fame in the '80s. Uh, I just see from his Wikipedia page that he lives in Marlow in Buckinghamshire, a solid place for famous in the eighties, made a few quid people to live. Oh, that is, yeah. There's an really awful is. lot of Rolls shadows about there, isn't there? Yeah, a lot of shads. Could he, he couldn't have afforded a shad, do you think? Um, whew, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's funny, isn't it? You just don't. I feel like because he had this sort of American persona, this pseudo American persona. I wonder whether he went for I don't know some sort of eighties Cadillac that isn't brilliant, <laughs> you know. Oh and man, it, and is still rocking it. Well, <laughs> this is uncanny. There's a picture if you Google Shaking Stevens car. Oh gosh, there is a picture of him sitting on the bonnet of an eighties, but I would say early eighties Cadillac. Oh my gosh, so there we old go. school so body on frame type. Yes. A Seville, but it looks to me like it might be what the Americans would have called a mid-sized at that point. So not your full kahuna. So your your yeah. theory about it being not quite. But then oh. there's another photo of Shaky leaning on a shad. You're joking. So hang on. He's got Now, both. there's no suggestion in this picture that it's actually his shad. I mean, he could have just seen it in the street. But um, <laughs> And then there's another What, that picture. pre-Instagram like, era of pretending something's yours when it probably isn't? Well, there's no such thing as a new idea, is there? I'm sure maybe Shaky was in the vanguard of pretending things aren't his or his. Um, there's another, there's a Getty Images have a stock photo of, of Shaky, and he is once again leaning on this Cadillac. Light blue. It's a colour picture, this. I need to find, and, uh, I can probably tell you what model this is, but I, the, the listeners don't want to hear me tapping away on my 
old fashioned sounding keyboard. <laughs> I think this this is the 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 black and white picture of him sitting on the bonnet of this Cadillac is the photo from the back sleeve of one of his albums. Of course. That's how much. And then there's another oh, photo here of him standing Steve. in front of the Cadillac, and it has it's S red, so it's late seventies, and it's uh, it's on UK plates, so it's obviously in Britain. And I'm going to say that's Shaky's car. I'm going to say that's his car because he couldn't have gone down the fifties Cadillac route like Elvis, because that would have been a little bit too. Ex- but yeah, that looks like a Seville. That is, yeah, a, I reckon that's I a Seville, so. which was a was a midsize Cadillac of that era. It wasn't a the full Fleetwood or. Um, Something like that could be a Coupe de Ville. Well, it's four door, isn't it? So if it's four door, I haven't got the picture. If it's four door, it's yeah, Seville. I think I think you're right, but not the bustle back one. So it's pre that. It's just a it's normal saloon that. shape. But just imagine f- if you possibly can. If Shaken was like, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Shaken, Shaken was gonna, was gonna get, it's gonna get himself a Cadillac. He's, like, I've got, I'm living up to this. I've got to get a Cadillac. However, yeah, my money might run out. It's got to have some level of economy. I know, I'm gonna get the diesel one. Because oh. they did do that GMC engine diesel Cadillac, didn't they? Which almost destroyed Cadillac's career, I believe. Um, um, yes, it was famously Because terrible. it used the same block as the petrol, and I think that was precisely yeah. its problem. It was weak. Yeah, it, they um, used to pop gaskets and all sorts. It was the yeah. same, one of those, uh, in the same sort of era, they did that cylinder deactivation, they did, which is quite commonplace era. now. Yeah, it was this era. But... But wasn't it? It was just absolutely rubbish because they didn't really have the computing power no. or the, the know how to do it properly. No. And that also kind of torpedoed their <laughs> reputation a bit, didn't it? I had a friend who had a Coupe de Ville. It was this era, 81, 82, I think. And it had cylinder deactivation and it would frequently just decide to run on four cylinders, which used to piss him <laughs> off immensely. As you can imagine, that was not a lot of power when the whole engine wasn't a great deal of power. I was going to say, I mean, what was, was that thing doing at, at best anyway? It was probably like 153 horsepower <laughs> with all eight running. So I can just imagine help. shaking Stevens in an early 80s car, like actually driving home for Christmas to the family somewhere in Wales. It'd be one of the sort of pit towns, I reckon. Yeah. And of course, it's a it's a bit bloody oh, cold and slippery. I just saw this actually. It says he's from Cardiff. Okay, so Cardiff Elvis. Cardiff Cardiff's Cardiff's Elvis. Elvis is heading back for Christmas, <laughs> and he's in a Cate's Elvis, and he's in. Yeah, exactly. He's he's heading back, and he and the weather is awful. Really, really quite slithery and cold, and he's in this blimmin'. You know how power assisted the steering is on those. You could mm, you could use yeah. your tongue uh, to keep it on the straight and narrow. And he hits an awful lot of black ice. And, of course, it's still Ooh. on the American white walls, so the, those yeah. tyres are good Rock for... Rock hard. No, they're good for 90,000. <laughs> good for 90,000, but not so good in sub-zero Welsh <laughs> conditions. I I just looked... Uh, he was actually born in Ely, uh, in Cardiff. So, um, but, uh, <laughs> so he's not this particularly relevant. We've just devoted so much time of the podcast to Shaking Stevens. I'll tell you what else about Shaking Stevens... Yes. Modern era Shaken Stevens. Yeah. Um, at a glance, he often seems to look a bit like Simon Mayo. Does he? Has he aged mm. better than Mayo, do we reckon? Or? I mean, you, you've got to say that he's he's looking all right, I think. Yeah. Do you reckon there's he a, survives? Here. I've lost on, it now. But. We were saying this, I think, like the other week about women E17 with their Christmas song. Do you think Shaken Stevens' Christmas song keeps him afloat? Uh, I'd love to know. I've just... You know how Google, one of the things, if you type in a celebrity's name, almost inevitably it will auto-prompt you with net worth after it. Yes. So I've just done that with Shake and Stevens. I mean, it's all going to be rubbish, isn't it? Because they just never seem to well, they because... just make it all up, don't they? But th- th- this this net worth, celebrity w- net worth website claims that he's worth $20 million. Tw- $20 million? Yeah. But then, you know, one of the things that may add weight to him doing all right is it does say his single Merry Christmas Everyone has re-entered the charts in the UK every year since 2007. Every... I'm surprised it's not more than that, actually. But Gosh. That's a lot. That's impressive. He's, yeah. Oh, you see now here this, and then Smooth Radio are claiming he's worth 15 million quid. So Gosh, he's not buying a diesel He's not buying Hang a diesel. On, what the, like. Whoa. Here we go. There's an NME story here about how much musicians make from Christmas songs. Oh, brilliant. Okay. And 
because I was, and it's funny, they start by referencing about a boy. You remember the book and the movie yeah. of the same name? Um, and uh, the story of that was always the lead character is surviving on the royalties from a Christmas song that his dad wrote, I think. That's isn't it? right. And, and yeah. I always thought, really? Is that a plausible thing? But um, so they think that Slade make um, about f- bloody hell. They make five hundred and twelve thousand pounds a year. <laughs> they make half a million sheets a year. Mm, Get out yeah. from that. Oh, the shoutings, bloody hell! Yeah, uh, it's Christmas. Or <laughs> um, well, the Daily Mail in two thousand sixteen. So that probably won't be true. But they claim that uh, it's actually closer to one million a year now from that song. A million quid a year. I should we should we pen. Should we pen an attempt? Well, I've always thought that, because I mean, there's a bit of a dearth of them, aren't there? It's like, the, when was the last new, fresh Christmas song that actually caught on? I think it's probably Mariah Carey, wasn't it? Or maybe some... Has you Bublé done anything he, original? Bublé... Oh, has he done anything original? That's a good idea. Because he just... His, his Christmas stuff is often covers, Cold, Coldplay's isn't it? So. Um, Christmas song does does okay. Christmas Lights. Yeah, or not? Yeah. Do you think it's been fully accepted so. yet? Because it takes a while for acceptance... Mm universal acceptance you know across the the ages and yeah the gates are open to this sort of like you are now allowed in the kind of being played forever yeah um, well that's it you have playlist. to become truly sort of seeped into the the fabric of the nation yeah. and i wonder whether some of these songs are actually played outside of the uk as well i mean mariah carey must be of course i wonder if slade gets any airtime elsewhere. um stop the cavalry by jonah louis yes how much? Is, it's an odd christmas song isn't it well this I mean, these these figures are slightly out of it's date. My daughter's favourite. Reckon... Is it? It's my daughter's favourite Christmas song. She's twelve. She's... Well, every time she's streaming that song, she's mm-hmm. contributing probably like zero point zero one pence towards Jonah Louis' annual income of one hundred twenty thousand pounds a year from that song alone. Okay, so one hundred twenty grand. Okay, if he was to live fairly frugally, I can't imagine he made a, a shed load of music during his active music career. If well, he's, he's quoted as saying that that song contributes 50% of his income, which is <laughs> like, all right, Jonah, don't think that. You're getting 120 grand from other songs as well. Well, what? How do you think musicians earn that much? Well, unless days, he's a they? removal man or something and he's doing all right. Oh, yeah. yeah he's actually, yeah. I'm actually a recruitment consultant, but I did that, that cavalry song in my spare yeah, time. M- 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 um, m- 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 I want Shaken Stevens to re record re record his Merry Christmas, Everyone. Go back out to Lapland to, to to make a new music video, but he has to go out in a 1981 Cadillac on very summer tires, <laughs> and, and they're they're all they, there's. I think there's ceiling issues with the tires and the we and the and, and the wheels. So oh, every like my night, old Cherokee, yes, right, every, park it in the wrong way, and a little crack in the alloy lets some of the air out. Yeah, so every yeah. night, shaken. Loses at least eight, nine psi in one of the tyres, but he just can't be asked to keep pumping yeah. it up. It's just it's just too much. So he regularly drives around with one of the front tyres properly, like leaning over on the bead, at yeah. like sort of like nine, ten, eleven psi. And but it's from behind the wheel. You can't really feel it. Because <laughs> no. it's heavily over assisted steering and incredibly slack damping. It just <laughs> yeah, it's no no real discernible effect on the handling either way. Um, Bad news oh. for Shaken Stevens. Don't. This NME article reckons that that song pulls in about £130,000 worth of royalties every year. But he didn't write the song. Didn't he? A man called Bob Heatley wrote the song. Oh. So he gets the cash. Shaky gets, so this article claims, between five and ten grand. So not to be sniffed at, because it's free money at this point, isn't it? He of doesn't course. have to do anything for it. Of course. But we are back down to, I think I'll just let the Cadillac keep running on seven cylinders rather than spend the money having it looked at. So, yeah, so territory. is he still got the, maybe a diesel Seville? And he's still just kind of tickling it along as best as possible. Maybe running it on a bit of veg oil. Maybe Cardiff takeaway drains drains off the yeah the, the, the yeah, yeah. Oil he and just gives just, it to shaken. Yeah, pop down City Road, get a few takeaways to ship in, and off he goes. And That's brilliant. With a, a huge, and it also makes him feel nostalgic for when he was on top of the pops, and they used to go a bit giddy with the dry ice back in the day because yeah. there's this enormous cloud follows him around wherever he goes. <laughs> Of dense, dense white smoke. Oh, a cold start on, and a high idle on one of those, leaving it outside oh to defrost God. for a bit. 
Oh, yeah. It just sounded like a fleet of dumper trucks. Ding, 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 <laughs> That'd ding, ding. That'd be awful. Ding. It would. It just ruin. It would ruin any of the effect you were trying to achieve with the Cadillac. I would say. Um, just uh, as Britain's leading podcast about Christmas songs and how much royalty money they put in, <laughs> I'll just leave you with this one. It's estimated, and this article is a, you know is a year old. It's estimated that Mariah Carey's um, "All I Want for Christmas Is You" has earned in royalties. I presume this is in its lifetime, sixty million dollars. Six zero. Six zero. Zero, 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 we zero, need zero. to, Rich. We need to pen something, just just to see, just to see if there's a chance it could get through. Because even if it earns five grand a year, you it's know, free money. Yeah. Well, that means every year possibly I could buy Hillman Avenger. You know that Christmas song? What did the guy who wrote it do? Oh, he just blew it all on Hillman Avengers in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, what he did? He saved story, up. Actually, he just couldn't stop buying them. Uh, you know, I like changing words in songs. The, the yeah. heart Saab game that we talked about a while back and he, all that. But I've just quite childishly at the moment, I'm just sort of, I'm just going around the house um, changing Christmas to piss flaps. Oh, interesting. So not one that it's the not kids sophisticated. can get involved with then. No, it's not one to share with the children. Also, it doesn't make any sense. All <laughs> I want for piss flaps is you. doesn't make any sense. All I want Last for piss, piss flaps, flaps, I gave you my heart. All I want for piss flaps is you. It's replacing a, a genital area uh, with your <laughs> face. <laughs> <laughs> Bas- basically. I hadn't thought about that. All I, just, I want it's more, for piss flaps. It's, it's because there are two things that make me laugh in this one is the start of the Slade song with Noddy Holder just going it's piss flaps <laughs> and Boo Blaze um, what's that one he does I don't, I don't, I don't he's so smooth I'm watching it for but please come home for Christmas isn't it I think but the backing singers just go Christmas oh the snow Christmas and so I just like singing along going piss flap <laughs> piss flap <laughs> and that keeps me amused actually that's got me giggly I'm going to try that one tonight well yeah I, I mean you know when I cause... crack open my can of port yeah <laughs> <laughs> you go you go straight for the fizzy port I've got I've, you know I've got to say I got handed as a gift at the um, the late break show Somerset tour event that's just gone by a lovely guy that I didn't rem- I don't remember the name of which I'm really sorry about and he handed me a ten year old aged port a quality looking bottle of of of, wow. of, of, of festive booze and I'm going to cherish it I'm not going to drink it all in one sitting that would be absurd and I'd end up with gout and probably <laughs> three ulcers yeah, why, but, <laughs> why not wash wash down an entire quarter of Stilton with that lovely port and see how oh. quickly the gout comes on oh, gosh it'd be hard wouldn't it I'll tell you what though did I, this um, chap explain why he was giving you port specifically yes because he said I want you to drink it and do a, and do a live Christmas Q&A on YouTube like you did last year because it was so brilliant it went wrong uh, and you were you got you. I was speed drinking out of kind of stress and worry <laughs> which is not something I would recommend to the public <laughs> but uh, you know you know what it's like you're, you're sort of going twice or maybe three times quicker out of nervousness because we had mm. some technical issues mm. yeah and I'm going to say I probably kind of yeah got a bit slurry <laughs> slurry at a few points and I was worried I'd, I'd ruined it all and the feedback was oh, that, that was quite funny Johnny you should do that again so I'm considering doing it again I'm not saying I'm going to definitely I'm considering yeah. it, um, yeah. but maybe we should do it, Rich. Maybe you you could come on board. A um, couple of tumblers of port, port. A t- Actually, a couple of tumblers port, port, port. or port. just a, a, I I would quite like to give, try and replicate your patented pint of Bailey's trick. Oh, that one. Well, we've got some Bailey's as well. My wife bought you? some the other day. You know, it's Christmas when there's Bailey's in the house. Yeah, we'll fold out a couple of those um, latex trays of, of ice into one, into a into a pint glass, and oh, tip it all over. Right, my wife bought those some of those latex ice trays, but they're with very small cubes. Yeah, they're a false. And she also economy. brought some very big ones, which I like because if you're doing something like a Negroni, and you know I like a Negroni, you do that, like they're a good Negroni. with that one big cube of ice. Nice. You only need one. But cube. if you're making something else, like a Bailey's or a gin and tonic or something, tiny cubes can't be doing with it. And I actually snuck the old ice cube trays, which are normal size, back into the freezer. And then my wife went, "We don't need these anymore. We've got these new ones." I was like, mm. "Oh, brilliant, brilliant." So yeah, ice wars. 
in our I'm good at sneaking things back in I have done it a lot actually Um, (laughs) in fact I've just done it because I've been filling a skip today which is something I'm I'm, I'm, I'm adamantly against but we're decluttering so which bit are you adamantly against I just don't like filling skips with things I feel like it should either just be recycled rehomed or just gradually siphoned off into the the, but then the, the, uh, I know it's a bit it's a bit different where you are because you've got a drive and and your your road is quite quiet. Yeah. But often skips are in fact a recycling center, aren't they? Because if you leave a skip, like if you left a skip outside my place here in London, oh, I'd be full within minutes. Well, yeah, but also then people pillage, don't they? They just come and take stuff that looks interesting or useful. So, yeah, that's true. I mean, my uh, my old flat, uh, there was a skip. One of the neighbours had a skip outside. And I once saw, I was in the front room and this guy drove past and suddenly absolutely anchored it in an old Vectra. I was just about to ask reversed you in a very, you know, <laughs> right back up, and then just leapt out and grabbed something from a skip. I couldn't even see what it was and then jumped back in the Vectra. And it's like, what a, what a Hawkeye he was to have what? spotted whatever it, dr- he'd, he'd seen. Drive by skip licking. Yeah, it That's was like amazing. real kind of smash and grab, but it was the the aggressiveness of the braking and reversing that really drew attention to it. I would I was hoping he might have done a sort of like um skip grab ghost riding. So he's the car he leaves the car kind of coasting in second. <laughs> <laughs> Jump, jumps out and knows he's only got to lift this sort of office chair off the top of the pile and jumps back into the car with it while it's just sort of like ticking over in seconds still in gear going down the road I mean it, it would definitely end in tears if you, you had cars down either, either side of the road yeah uh, yeah. the Vectra Ghost Rider would just be brilliant wouldn't it <laughs> the skip I, I, used to, I used to skip like, when, I, when I lived in London because there's some incredible skip stuff. pick yeah Mm. It's, it, there's some there's some great gear that people throw out, but trust me, the stuff I'm I'm throwing out, I'm making sure is not great. Although I did find some stuff that had been put out that it was like, no, that's not going out, that's coming back in. Are we talking about bits for cars here? There are some car bits, but it's mostly mostly kind of household related uh-huh. shelving units that nobody really seems to want anymore, and kid stuff. Well, there's a sort of there's a kind of a, a type of item isn't it that I think we all have in our houses which is you have no use for it anymore it's not quite nice enough or pristine enough to give to charity no but it still has some service life left in it yeah what do you do with it the other thing you can do if you live in a city is um just leave it outside your front door you know on the path outside with a big sign People- saying free take me or well, you don't even need to do that. And certainly not in London. I think you just leave it. We used to do it more because our old flat was on a you know sort of quite a busy pedestrian thoroughfare where we live now. There's not really any through traffic, and um, we used to just call it the system. And for things like that, you just go, "What are we going to do with this? Oh, I'll just put it put it out. See if the system will sort it." And you know, and then and then I would come back in and inevitably a, a sort of sometimes a matter of minutes or hours, come back in and go. You know, it's old shelves. They've gone. And we'd go, the system works. But I don't think... It, it wouldn't work here because there's not enough... We just don't get enough people walking past except the neighbours. And the, what they do do is people in this neighbourhood, we've got a little WhatsApp group for the people on our street and the next street. I've heard. People will suddenly go, does anyone want this chair? And But sometimes the stuff they're putting on, they just go, honestly, just take it to the tip. It's yeah, visibly so, ruined. It's so bad. You've really got to... And that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm, I'm there with that. After putting the roof back on the conservatory last week. Oh, yeah. Renting, How did that know, go? It was all right. I mean, it started raining while I was putting it all back together, but I've sort of bodged it back together again, so that's <laughs> cool. I tell you, you know, I, 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 coming back from Somerset, I, I stayed overnight with my mum and dad for old time's sake while, um, while Chops drove a seven and a half ton Mercedes lorry back on her own. I saw. Absolute I trooper saw. of a woman. Um, yeah. Unfazed. And Why did you have a seven and a half ton lorry for that live show weekend? Couldn't fit it all in a, in a normal van. And oh. L- what were you taking? Mercedes. Take chairs? Mercedes. Yeah, took everything. Yeah. Chairs, <laughs> merch, uh, uh. And, and all of the affiliated banners, flags. Um, oh, of course. Everything. Yes. Yes, yeah. you, you name it, it was in there. But it wasn't full. Mm. It was just it was 
too much for a normal size van. And Mercedes trucks, mm. um, bless them, they who have supported the previous late break show live events, they were like, do you want to borrow a seven and a half tonner? And like, yeah, go on then, go on then. And the bloke that was going to drive it down while Chops drove the Jimny, he realised he was too young to drive it on his licence. Oh, Because yeah. we've got the last last of the old school, pre, yeah, yeah. pre-Jan 97, I think. Yeah. Which means you can just get in a, a seven and a half tonner. Bearing in mind, this thing's like 12 feet tall. You can just get in it and go, yeah, okay, let's go. And that's precisely what Chops did. In fact, Chops has only ever driven it in the dark. She drove it in pitch dark down there and drove it in pitch dark back. So she's never driven it in the day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's the first time I drove a seven and a half tonner was when we were making... Um, sweet sweet gear. love in a verge. No, we were making that Top Gear Ground Force charity special and we we had a seven and a half tonner. I remember that. To look like the Ground Force lorry. And, um, and suddenly it was like, well, we've got this lorry, it's outside. We'd rented it, I think. Uh, and it had been dropped off and we'd had it all stickered up. <laughs> and then went, right, who's going to drive it down? And all the researchers went, Oh, uh, we are too young to have the right kind of license to drive a We're all tennis, so. 14. Yeah, I had to step up. Was it it's Manuel? Good. They're amusing, or aren't they? Was it all yeah, time? yeah, Manuel. No, it was, it was quite old. Quite oh, old, man. shabby. Once you get your eye in with them, they're fine. I've driven them since as well. It's yeah. quite like a seven and a half tonner. They're kind of like, the, you know, it's like a mini Mars bar, isn't it? They're like sort of. What you get, you get lorry. the flavour, but it's it's not yeah. as much of a commitment as a king size. You're not doing full 44 tonner on. Um, yeah. Yeah. Whilst, whilst you know, yeah. off your head on pet pills and <laughs> and whatever else. Well, I drove back Lorry in the Dodge. Lorry drivers do, don't I, do anymore. I drove back uh, there and back in a much smaller truck called a Dodge Charger. And um, on the way down, again, drove it at night. Um, I, th- I, I, was, I, was, I was starting to, I pulled into some services for a sort of a wee stop because we drove in convoy and I could hear clunky noises coming from the back end like the diff or the prop shaft I was thinking oh no what's this mm. so I kind of drove very gingerly the rest of the way and thought I'll deal with that on Sunday when the show's all over and um, ended up crawling under it I mean it was weird I went back and stayed at mum and dad's like old times with my son <laughs> and in the morning after breakfast me him my dad all went outside and put the car on wooden blocks and crawled on it underneath it. And it was basically like living at home again, like I used to, where my brother, <laughs> me and my dad would crawl underneath the car to find out what was broken on it. And um, and then we took it to the local garage. We thought we knew what was wrong with it. Yeah, it was missing a circlip. A circlip had come off on the prop shaft. And so there was a bit of slack. So it was uh. sort of going out of vibration. It was out of balance and it was vibing through the whole car, drumming. Yeah. So we sorted that. And then on the way home, uh, it turns out the alternator stopped working, but I was oblivious to it because I don't think the no charge light is working on the dash. So I didn't notice the voltage drop. And oh, it was the, we were lucky. I just thought we'd pull into Corley services because I got to the point where I needed a week. And I thought, I'm just going to, I'll just pull in. And honestly, as I pulled off onto the slip road to go into the services, the whole car died. Lights, power, everything. And I knocked it into neutral, and I coasted right up to drive through Starbucks. Went for a wee, and then got me torch out to work out what was going on. Um, and I've got to say, at that point, I wasn't worried. I don't panic when I break down. I thought, I'll just see what's wrong. Let's see. This AA van came storming over with its lights flashing, you know, its beacons. Yeah. And, the, and I'm not a member of the AA. And this guy got out, and he said, look... I'm in between jobs, and un- until my computer bings to tell me where I've got to go next, I can give you a bit of my time. Do you want me to help? And he got his multimeters out and everything, and within about three or four minutes, he was like, your alternator's not putting out any charge. Your battery's showing eight volts. There's your problem. You've probably yeah. been driving for the last hour and a half on just battery power, with lights on, with wipers on, because it was a bit oh. weather was cack. Yeah. So he charged. He gave me twenty minutes of charge off his van with a special kind yeah. of set of leads. And this is this is lovely and old school. He said, he said, "I said I think I've got breakdown cover, but it's not with the AA." Unfortunately, he said, "Well, look, I've just given you twenty minutes of charge. It's showing twelve volts. Here's what you do: 
you you got 60 miles to get home because I told him where I the town I lived he said drive home mm. with no headlights behind a lorry and you'll probably get home <laughs> And, I, and, I, and that's why we're Britain's fourth emergency service. No, no, no. Because of our old school advice. I'm not throwing the AA under a bus at all because it was no, a fantastic no, no. idea. I mean, and I did do it. So you're, that's the thing. You're, I went you're, full you're old school. You make your own choices. I went full old school and I had my son in the car. And I was like, right, we've got running lights, which on an American car are orange on the front, as you probably know. Mm. So it just says two glowing orange domes on the front and I thought I'm going to I've, I drove one handed with one hand on the rocker switch for the headlights all the way back slip streaming a lorry and every time I felt like I needed to be really visible I just put my lights on for a bit and then clicked them straight back off <laughs> and we, we managed to get home and I shut and I put the car on charge it was amazing put the car on charge this morning and it was um it was eight percent charged according to my intelligent recharging device oh. so we just limped home and i was so pleased i've never concentrated so you, that much in a long time my no. eyes are like my eyes are incredible in the dark now <laughs> amazing <laughs> honestly i'm like owl vision and that is how johnny smith became owl man <laughs> i look um, like a really shit bootlegger you know driving that charger without sufficient headlights don't get me wrong, if I saw a car coming the other way or we were in a situation where it was pitch dark because there were no overhead lights, I did use the lights, but I just kept saving them every time we got to a junction where it was fully lit. But yeah, well, I mean, got home. were you going cross country at this point? Were you sort of in, out in the sticks? Yeah, we we, we, we we broke down at Corley Services, and which is on the M6, and we had to get onto the A14, A14 to the A43, and on the A43 there's no overhead lights, it's just pitch dark. Uh -huh. So that's when it gets tricky. That's when Johnny had to properly drive. A charger yeah. moving through the night with no headlights on. Sinister. It's quite a sinister thing. It's a yeah. very, it's more sinister than an Audi A7 with three guys in the back, I would yeah. say. <laughs> or I've mentioned before that uh, BMW E30, I used to see uh, a lot of mornings when I was commuting to Watford many years ago, which always had four adult men in it. And I just thought, that's, why is that so threatening? I don't know. It's because it's, it it's just, just fill, filled with purpose, isn't it? There's something going yes. down. Yes. Yes. What are you all up to? Well, they're yeah. probably just car sharing, something perfectly innocent. But there's just, I mean, I don't think they were doing a bank job because I used to see them quite regularly unless they were <laughs> repeatedly turning over the banks of the Hertfordshire area. But um, yeah, just very, very, very intimidating. But yeah, just can you imagine standing in a country oh. lane and you hear on the breeze a low, a low burble. And then around the corner just oh, come two orange yeah. lights and you realise you're like what is that is that a yeah. lorry they're very far apart those lights what is it and then the charger dun, dun, oh, it was it was exactly like that but obviously I was I was really concentrating because I wasn't on my own and and I just didn't want to do the whole like mm. I, I said to him I said listen we were lucky to break down off the motorway and, and coast into the services. I said, listen, if we yeah. break down, I'll just make sure we, we coast somewhere. Because that car will coast for a very long time. So if you knock it into neutral, it's it's on American <laughs> tyres, which, as you know, are good for <laughs> many miles. Rock hard. So, rock hard, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, but we, it was great. We got, we, got, we got home. I was really pleased. But I need to give it a bit of winter worship, that car. Yeah, I've so used that, it a lot this year. It's going to need a new alternator then or at least to have yeah. it fixed yeah and this is the third alternator I've had in that car since I've owned the car and bearing in mind I haven't done that many miles in it because it's not a car you annually rinse for mileage it's ridiculous and they're always American alternators proud American alternators with very small letters made in Mexico <laughs> and and my brother's just like listen Johnny they, they're dog shit just get, get it sent to an old there's an old bloke he uses to um to do th to do things like that, to rewind an alternator so he said just get it remade in England uh, to a to a to a good spec um, and then just put it on there which is what I'm going to do because I'm bored of buying another alternator which is just crap quality yeah but it's frustrating I mean, it's, but what was really good is obviously when the AA man went listen and you're driving an old car but what I tell people with new cars is just drive back 
using as few things as you can. He said, don't have the radio on. I said, doesn't matter. It doesn't have a radio. That's <laughs> cool. Or just have one that works. Uh, I said, don't have any uh, anything on. The heater, fan. No, it's all right. The, the car gives up so much heat anyway. I don't need to use the fan. Um, so, yeah, we drove back with with nothing apart from you know, like the tail lights and those little running lights. And that was it. But I do need to give it some winter worship now. It's done a lot this year. A lot of shows. Yeah, yeah. A lot of miles. She's a good car. She had my back. <laughs> she knew that she was ill, but she knew she, we could handle it. We got back. So, uh, big shout out to X- XS Power Batteries. That battery was uh, is a good battery. It held out. Yeah. Fair play. Yeah. Hey, talking of very large cars with V8 engines. Smooth yeah. link, Rich. Well done. Um I haven't told you about that. Shaken Stevens has yeah. bought another car. Yeah, this just in, Shaky's been spotted in a car dealership on a used car <laughs> lot in Cardiff, uh, padding around a Mercedes, um, padding around a Cadillac BLS, very on brand for modern Shaky. Oh, so. wonderful, wonderful. Uh, yeah. No V8, obviously, but you know, it is the 2.8 V6 turbo, so it's got a bit of poke. Uh, no, I, I haven't told you about the Bentley Mulsanne that I borrowed. Um, Oh, because you know, I was um, son. I was talking to the Bentley um, PR guy at the Late Break Show live in Manchester a few weeks ago, and we started talking about their heritage fleet, which he's in the process of sort of re- reinvigorating and trying to make sure that everything on it is tippity top and runs and can be used when required. And he casually mentioned that the last Mulsanne press car they had on the fleet before that car stopped production, rather than sell it, they hung on to it and just put it onto the heritage fleet. Did they? And I said, it's funny, I've never, I love Mulsanne's, I love, I love the idea of them. I've, and you know, the other, it was a few months ago, I was sort of getting a bit gooey about seeing ones for 40 grand and thinking I should buy one. Tell and me I, about it. I said, I've never actually driven one. And he went, oh, well, you can borrow the heritage car if you want. That's, you know, it's it's there for, for using. And um, so I asked to borrow it when I was going to that um, event that I did with Alex Goy at Cafe and Machine a couple of weeks ago. Oh, you went there in that? You well, I had it for the weekend, and... and then I took it to that on the Monday and had it had it for the couple of days into that week. And um, it is a magnificent car. Bloody hell. Yeah. What a thing. It, it's amazing how much you can sort of zoom about in it. I mean, it's big. It's comically big. I I thought... <laughs> It is very big, yeah. It was delivered to my house, and I could see it, but it was parked in such a way that I couldn't sort of see the full length of it. And then I went out in the dark to go and collect my kids from something, drove there, and parked up and thought, ooh, we're already very close to the wall behind me, and I feel like we're not in the space properly. But okay, never mind. Got the kids, opened the back doors to put the kids in, and I suddenly went, oh, right, it's the long wheelbase one. They've sent. I didn't realise it was a long wheelbase. Then I checked, it's not. It's got a massive amount of room in the back, but it is just a long car. It's two feet longer than my Range Rover. Two feet? And, you know, is it really? Wow. Yeah, I think it's something like that. I looked this up because I was, I was quite staggered at how, how long it was. But you can sling it around. It's, it's quite remarkable how... It's a, from memory, it's a driver's car. Yeah. It's, it's the same as the Rolls Ghost. It's, it's a surprisingly engaging car for the gentleman driver. Yes. Or gentle lady driver. But there is a um, downside to this, and it is uh, that they have given it quite weighty steering. I mean, steering is actually really uh, good, and I think it's 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 sort of you know it gives you a good sense of what's going on for a big car like that, and it's quite impressive in itself, and helps the fact that the, the, the sort of the accuracy of the steering and the feedback it gives you is enough that you sort of feel confident as you zoom about, but. When I went to try and palm it, bit too much weight. Not a good oh, palming too, car. Too heavy to palm. Too heavy to palm. You can, but it's just you need so much sort of palm purchase to be confident of doing a successful. You certainly can't twirl it in and out of a parking space in the way that I could in, say, my Range Rover or um, you know an old Jag or something. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not. That's the one one mark against it. It's a poor palmer. But in all of the respects, it's absolutely Robert fabulous. would be disgusted, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really let Palm down respect. by that. Mercy, mercy me. I've got yeah. to put a lot of effort into this. <laughs> but everything else about it is tremendous, including that engine is 
so talky. He's got yes. something like 800, 811 pound feet of torque. It's insane. Yeah, it's 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 brilliant. Uh, it's really. I remember being really impressed with it. It's just so. And actually, what I also realised is you don't need to rev it. It does. It, it gets a little sort of gravelly if you rev it, but you don't need to. Why would you rev it? It's got all the torque you ever need. So, as a consequence, it's actually unless you're really stropping on. You don't need to use the paddles. You just sort of leave it in auto, and it's perfectly good because you're you never going to bog down out of a corner. No, it's got to be the ultimate caravan car. <laughs> <laughs> not that anyone, not that anyone will. I'm sure that was one of the main design parameters when oh. they were coming up with it. Do you, I was thinking because the, the front of the mole sign is a little bit awkward, isn't it? Still, which is a shame because the sides and the back I do like. Yeah, um, and I was thinking the other day. That shape with the with the with the sort of uh, slightly awkward headlights. Imagine if they were under shutters, a bit like a Lincoln from oh. the seventies, oh. or even a Charger of some sort. Yeah. Imagine if they or a Cord. Let's go back to sort of pre-war. Cord. A Cord. Yeah. Yeah. So it could have that grill, the majestic grill, and quite pronounced um, front wings. They got a really good shape front wing. Yeah. But you could have the headlights hidden until you use them. Interesting. That could be good, couldn't it? Because I know what you mean about the front of that car. I, I mean, it, it, I, it's grown on me since it was first announced. I remember when it came out, I kind of went, oh, mm. are we sure about this? And then I saw one, and I kind of went, uh, okay, yeah, maybe. And it's sort of grown on me, but it does have that, it's, it looks slightly crestfallen. I mean, not as yes. crestfallen as the current Golf. Which is the most crestfallen car in history? Oh no, but that has the optional illuminating eyebrow, which I've seen a lot of lately. Yes, of them coming towards you, and it, do you know what? They look so much better in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> do you know they've just put that that um, monobrow on the polo as well? Because I've just had a polo press car. The facelifted polo is out, and I've just borrowed one and of those to review the... it. And it's got. I discovered this when I um, pulled up to park somewhere, and there was a window, the shop window, and I was like, yeah. "Oh God." It's got it's a got monobrow. That. So is it, hang on, is this Noel Gallagher's high visibility brows? <laughs> what? <laughs> He's at it again, isn't he? He's at it again. <laughs> Even at night, you can Noel see Noel Gallagher's clearly. highly distinctive design feature. Except it's not, yeah. actually, is it? Because it's on the electric Mercedes as well, the EQ range. They all have monobrows, yes. don't they, at night? And um, something else does as well, I saw recently this is a this is a trend isn't it it's going to become out of control i quite like th that mark 8 golf brow only because it's one of the few th design features on the outside which you go yeah that's all right that's do you know what it reminded me of it reminded me of bmw's angel eyes and in a world now where there's a lot of very sick looking bmw's the angel eyes were such a master stroke yeah weren't they so good you didn't need to illuminate the grill. It just had, and they were very, very, um, quite scary. I thought when they came up behind you on the motorway, the yes. angel eyes. You'd go, "Oh, get out of the way! Get yeah. out! Move!" Oh, I like that, but I think BMW need to bring that kind of stuff back. That sort of subtlety that yeah. that spoke volumes. Well, that's the thing. They're willfully spunking away all of these quite distinctive features that they came up with and therefore are theirs to use at will. And other car companies yeah. would pour vinegar into their own eyes to have something like the Hofmeister kink or the angel eyes or the kidney grill. It's just so simple but effective of yeah. making people go, oh, right, that's a BMW. I knew that from 20 paces. And they're yeah. just sort of misusing them or throwing them away in a really odd way. I don't get it. I mean, the kidney thing, I know they've sort of gone the other way. You could shrink the kidneys really right down, like a BMW M1, mm. because they would have an intake lower down that was a little bit more subtle and possibly active. Yeah. You could go the other way, and I think it would have worked better completely the other way, shrinking them right down. And maybe you could backlight them if you were desperate. Mm. Or Ooh. just go with the angel eyes. Hey. I mean, what? oh, actually, no, would that count though? Because you're not allowed to have a light up badge on the front of a car, certainly in Europe. Is it a badge though, or is it just well, two holes? It's not, it's, it's a just design feature, isn't it? It's holes. a grill. Yeah, it's a grill. That's, That's like me having a small backlight in my tonsils, and I walk around <laughs> everywhere with my mouth slightly <laughs> Every time open you yawn, at night. <laughs> it's like someone's That's... accidentally switched on the torch on it's, their phone. It's a, yeah, it's a backlit mouth. That's what it is. It's a backlit mouth. But then, what if you slept with your mouth open and your wife would be like, oh, God, this is worse oh, than the snoring. 
He's lighting up the room because he's sleeping with his mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay because um, everyone in Munich will go, yeah, I like that. It's, it's, it's authentic. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like that, that, that could work really well. But that's really the thing. Well. I, I sort of feel like these massive oversized kidneys, which I keep saying, and I'll stick to this, that they are not, in most cases, the worst parts of the cars they're attached to. I just think that sort of that really flabby four series at the moment is just such a sort of tragic bit of design work that the the, the beaver face thing is the least of its worries. <laughs> but but really oversizing a design feature, I always think is like a it's a it marks a lack of confidence. It's it just does. Do you remember when Citroens Citroen suddenly realised that they'd been, their cars had become incredibly bland? So when they were facelifted, you know, so the Zantias and things, they they gave them really massive chevron badges on the front, and it was just like it's too late, lads, too late. Yeah, don't yeah. don't overcompensate with a really big badge. And I, don't, I think the same is true. Of too BMW. much. Sort of desperation, isn't it? Well, it's the same with that. For acceptance. That bloody awful. What is it? The X two. Is the X two the one that's got the really flat roof, like a Rover eight hundred? Just looks toss and it's got bmw badges on the um d pillars on the d pillars in a recess yeah which actually would have been quite an expensive pressing probably you'd think so and it's an extra cost because extra badges isn't it you know it's like if, if those badges cost like i don't know 50p each and you extrapolate that across hundred thousand cars or whatever it would every every year they're making <laughs> it is actually an added expense they don't necessarily need but i think it's because they kind of went oh shit this car's actually quite bland and indistinct and doesn't look like a bmw slap some old badges on gang that'll do it and it's um it's, it's just it's rather disappointing <laughs> anyway uh, we could rag on bmw's current design disaster wankery all day but um but <laughs> <laughs> Let's not um, design wankery. What else was I going to talk to you about? Oh yeah, no, if you you know when you sort of realise how much of a dad you've become. And I was talking yeah, to a mate it, last night, a, and I was raving about my I got a new bird feeder that the squirrels can't get at. And I'm so delighted with it. Yeah, and this mate of mine, he's bloody. one of the he's one of the dads my, from my, one of my daughter's friends' dads, and uh, and he went and he's younger than me, and he just went, "Is this an age thing?" And I went, no, uh, oh, yeah, it probably is, actually. It's it's extremely middle-aged. But what I've realised, I've never even spotted it. First of all, I, I, I often dad reverse. But also, I've started doing this thing when the kids are in the car. When we pull up anywhere, particularly at home, I'll switch off the ignition and then go, right, or here we are. Or something like that. I was like, Where, where's this come from? Okay, then. And it's like, what? Does not need any of these it's, words? This is partridgeism, isn't it? Well, it's, it is. There's a lot yeah. of... It's a, it's a partridgeism. You clap the hands together and go, <laughs> right. And you switch on the courtesy uh-huh. lights if, if it doesn't put them on for you. You put it on as if, you know, as if you're a taxi driver and you're going to ask your kids for a bit of cash. Uh- okay. <laughs> the meter says four let's just round it up to five i'll let it uh, i can do the receipt if you want mate it's entirely up to you um, i used to love that mercedes have or had certainly a button in the front that turned on just the rear courtesy lights yes uh, i had a i had a merc with that it's a good Brilliant. solid merc feature isn't it it's just yes. like so i don't know if the smaller ones have it but certainly the bigger mercs because our cls shooting brake had it and it was actually yeah. quite brilliant for amusing Young yeah our boy when he was a baby if we were on a long journey and he was getting a bit restless we'd just basically flash that back on and off <laughs> or just turn it on for a bit and then turn it off again and it amused him no end no it's it's a great it's a great idea that it's and a um, good, uh, it's a great idea it's a great idea it's, but it's, i wonder is it is that just something where they they kind of went well a lot of you know a certain of our cars are used as taxis let's just put it in all of them and then because it's a it's a proper well, it's, taxi feature isn't it it is it's probably just a it's, it's a it's a type of switch which goes both ways rather than just going one way or something isn't it it's i i, I i'm a big fan of it are those little features though they oh, it's so much better than gesture control or uh Voice, voice activated, but bo- but bo- bollocks that you get on cars. I mean, God, honestly, what you've got voice activated bollocks now? Oh, the, the LED the tonsils of time. and voice activated bollocks. You're a very high tech man these days. Number of times you press a button on the steering wheel for voice, and then it'll go boop boop, yes or whatever, and you'll go 
put on Capital Radio and it'll just go, did you want to go to Carlisle? No, I most definitely didn't. Because if I did, I would have fucking said that. (laughs) Calling Chris Wilson. What? No. Yeah, no, not a thing. Not a thing. It's just, it's just tech slurry. It's now, tech slurry that needs to be just tipped away. On that note, a friend of ours, yeah. Tom Barnard, we both know, wrote in yeah. after last week's podcast, um, and he said that um, our our chat about bitter and German words. By the way, uh, a chap on Twitter whose name I'm not going to be able to find now, who is. German, or at least a German speaker, said that my assertion that the car company Bitter sounds like you'd just be saying please in German. He said it doesn't work like that. The word oh. bitter is the word bitter in German, and, and bitter is pronounced, the, the please word is pronounced differently, or at least is it something. He said a German speaker would be able to tell the difference, so it doesn't work. So I there's a slight word. intonation difference. I or, guess uh, so. It's clipped I don't, or something. Yeah. That's like oh. a friend of mine whose parents are. Chinese said that there's lots of words in Chinese that are it's, they're very subtle intonation differences completely alter the meaning and I think she said one of them was like shoes and vagina are basically the same word but it's different intonation <laughs> I apologise <laughs> any what? I seriously I'm, I'm, this is something I was told a long time ago um, shoes I'll, and vag something no. like that if anyone is a, a, a Mandarin speaker and they this rings a bell please get in touch otherwise because I, I, I feel like I might be talking rubbish now, there was something where it's like two quite common words but with very different meanings and it's all on the intonation my gosh um so uh our mate tom wrote in he said back in 2000 i had a mercedes s55 on test and it had the first voice activated phone system you had to slot in your own sim but the car would dial numbers for you not from the phone book you'd have to shout out the numerals say dial and it would do it it worked perfectly and was the cause of much amazement unless you said the number nine. Being German, it thought you were saying no and cancelled the whole operation. Oh, no. <laughs> so you could call any number in the world as long as it had no nines in it. This would have been a big oh. issue if a kidnapper had tied your hands behind your back and you wanted to alert the police. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, of yeah, course, just, of just, course. You sound like Margaret Thatcher going, no, no, no. Um... Now, this is our first ever father and son correspondence corner because uh, it was Tom's dad, who's our 84-year-old listener that we referenced a couple of weeks ago, with the who, Tom's dad had the... The, the Resto Mod Mower. The Resto Mod the... Mower. So I said to Tom, could, you, could we have the full story, please? And from Mr. Barnard Senior comes the news that in 1953, when he was at school... The groundsman at his school had a knackered Dennis lawnmower and Spurs, the football team, wanted to use the school's playing field for an event because it was next door to their training ground. In exchange for this, the owner of JAP Motorcycles, which was nearby and somehow linked to Spurs, offered to service the mower. This servicing seemed to consist of bolting in a leftover Speedway bike engine. What? Its mowing debut attracted a crowd of boys. The thing started first time, which was unusual in itself. The groundsman then adjusted the throttle to his usual mowing position and watched in horror as it shot off across the field through a hedge and halfway up a tree. No way it was that potent. (laughs) They do do use JAP engines, a lot of the speedway bikes, Ah. yeah. And uh, Morgan three-wheelers used to use JAP engines too. Did they? Yeah, they did. Oh, yeah, I the, thought... the, 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 the pre-war ones. I think they used two different engines depending on either era or power output. I can't um, remember, and I'm sure a listener will know. Yeah. Uh, but one of them was a JAP motor. Um, uh, the, our listeners will. Sorry, I thought you meant the, like, the, the modern... Um, oh, no, not the modern one. Because they use no. a... What's the, what's the name of the they engine? They use an SNS, S&S. Smith & Sniff engine. They use oh. a Smith & Sniff um, two-litre um, V-twin, don't they? Yeah. Um, uh, off of Harley Davidson de- derivatives. That's um, right. Yes. What is it? S and S is. is, is it's S and S. Yeah, they're an aftermarket kind of Harley, a f- sort of affiliated company. I've always thought that it, w- we we should have a logo made that looks really similar to theirs. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that always ends well. It always ends well, and of course, there's such a crossover in product yes. between what we do and what S and S do. Yeah, yeah. Our yeah. range of engines for Harleys is going really well. Amazing. 
Um, yeah. Or as a non Harley rider, and you're not a Harley rider either. No. Maybe we could just get SNS to put SNS engines in other things for us. <laughs> Lawn mowers. Lawn mowers. There we go, car. That would be absolutely. I had a bloke come up to me at the show and say, I've got the same mower as you. British Army <laughs> Lawn Rider. <laughs> awesome. Ba- basically, high fived him and went, and I said to him, I said, Is it as lethal? as mine he went oh yeah it's awful it tries to take your feet off every time you turn I went yeah yeah like, like properly dangerous he went oh yeah it's not trustworthy <laughs> but it's great it looks great honestly it's it's the silliest uh, mower it looks great but it, you just can't trust using it that's uh, two more from Johnny Smith's untrustworthy lawnmower later <laughs> uh, we should um, we should wrap this up I suppose and um uh yeah, Shaken Stevens has come in with his cylinder shut down yeah. Seville. <laughs> <laughs> it's running on five? Snow is falling, yeah. Sounds like a sort of B-side quattro. Um, oh, <laughs> imagine hearing that coming through the Welsh forest. <laughs> yeah, oh, that? Be, wow. oh, gosh, it's shaky in a terminal understeer. Yeah, is that... Wow, is that Hanu Mikola? No, it's shaky in his Cadillac, desperately trying to get to a pub gig. <laughs> <laughs> um, Didn't so, see the black eyes signs. Yeah, terrible. Before we go, uh, three things to tell you. One, um, Johnny's got a solo YouTube channel. It's called the Late Break Show. Uh, what are you doing over Christmas? Are you still putting vids out? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put a few um, put a few videos out. We've got a um, let me think. What? Oh, we've got. Um, just trying to think when this goes out. I think you, we. I have the exclusive. On the MST Mark One, definitely not a Ford Escort um, ah. feature, which was quite special. I drove it on cut slicks around Snowdonia, and it started to snow. <laughs> so, were you sliding like shaky? I was, I was jerking like shaky as well. I was terrified, <laughs> and I managed to get it home okay. <laughs> yeah, we definitely did a left, right, left manoeuvre when we didn't want to, oh. um, but it was wow. all okay. It's all okay, guys. Good. And it's a stunning build. It's imagine what Welsh people would have done to a Ford Escort if 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 they were singer. It's kind of like that, really. <laughs> imagine if singer so, was Welsh and did Ford Escorts. Yes, uh, that's right. Yeah. That's the better way of saying it. That's yeah, a, well, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a tantalising prospect. Uh, second thing I've got to tell you is I have various books out. I, if you've got Amazon Prime and you get in quick and you're listening to this on uh, the Monday that it goes out, you might still squeak in. Uh, one of my books for Christmas for somebody else or for just for yourself uh, the latest one is called Boring Car Trivia 3 it's packed with arcane information about cars it's a good book and the third thing I've got to tell you is uh, topically because it's almost Christmas um, the song Do They Know It's Christmas famously recorded at very short notice on one day there are however two Americans on that track as it was recorded on the day one of them is Jody Watley who some of you might remember as a singer who uh, was American but was living in London at the time the other Americans that are on that record that very few people realise are Cool and the Gang Cool and the Gang were on Do They Know It's Christmas? Cool and the Gang are on Do They Know It's Christmas because really? they happened to be in the UK at the time and they were on the same label Phonogram as Bob Geldof and they were in the Phonogram offices when Geldof came in in his rumbustious sweary style to pitch that he was going to do this charity record right now and pull together all the biggest stars in pop in Britain really? and Cool and the Gang went hey we'll take part that's amazing I did not I, would, I, I don't can, does anybody hear them or no they don't seem to get a solo or anything I mean but they they are if you look at the artist listing they are on there and actually there's an interview out there somewhere which I'll put on the Patreon in the show notes of um people's recollections of making that and you know sort of famously Bono wasn't very comfortable with the tonight thank god it's them instead of you because he thought it was a bit of a twatty thing yes. to say yes and Geldof and Midge Yore kind of talked him round and then he gave that incredible performance of it and, and made it one of the standout lines of the song but apparently um the guy from Cool and the Gang whose name escapes me also didn't like that line and is quoted in this piece as going yeah I never liked that line I thought it was terrible Oh gosh! So yeah, he was there. Status quo were um, were in were in it as well, but you don't really hear them. I don't know if they actually sung. I think they just went there and drank. 
Yeah, and brought a bag of naughtiness, apparently, some South American pick-me-ups that apparently got things <laughs> moving, <laughs> as was famously South their America. fondness at the time. No, there's another story about that, that um, they were supposed to do the... Um, I think they were going to do that sort of middle eighty bit. The here's to you with the nerd, and um, it turns out that Midjour hadn't really checked on how good status quo were at harmonies, and they weren't very good. And Francis Rossi had to sort of take him on one side and go, "Look, Midge, I do most of the singing. Rick is really not a singer <laughs> in in the studio sense of the word, and so that's why we we, we struggle to do harmony. So someone else did it. In the oh end. my gosh! Well, there you go. So yeah, there we go. So, so they stood at the back with Sherbet Dib Dabs, didn't they? Basically, yes. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that that we've started this podcast talking about Shaken Stevens, and I think he he actually. Um, postponed releasing that christmas song because um of the this song do they know it's christmas yeah he was going to put it out in the same year the same christmas era and then thought no i'm not going to try and compete with that and it's a charity record so i'll hold it back for a year later now then a bit of housekeeping um before we go as well um if you're listening to this the day it comes out it's the 20th of december it's almost christmas or piss flaps if you prefer um (laughs) so that's that's it for us for this year um we're going to take a break next week so there'll be no show out on the 27th the following week um i'm going to put out a compilation show of some bits from our old youtube videos Oh, uh, see how that goes um, so uh, that'll be out on the 3rd of January and then uh, we'll be back after that yeah we will on the yeah, 10th still, still talking about Christmas songs obviously still talking about Christmas and, songs and still yeah, talking yeah. absolute fizzy arse water as usual <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just want to say thanks to all our um, th- thanks very much to all the comments that come through to say how much they enjoy listening and thanks to everyone who is a patron for the Smith & Stiff podcast that's really really um, helpful uh, and welcomed and uh, I hope you all have a really lovely Christmas a sweet sweet and if you're driving home for Christmas obviously you have to just get some brushes on the drums yeah. whilst you're trying to light a cigarette do make sure the, the piano of... is very tinkly ding, 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 yes make ding, sure the person ding. in the passenger seat's got that tiny little piano ready and, <laughs> and make sure you're skidding around on very loose loose ground while you're trying to light the cig and do the Life brushes shaky. on the drums yeah 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 uh well and, yes thank you but uh, as johnny said thank you ever so much for listening this year we really do appreciate your support and um, it's um it's not always been an easy year for any of us i suppose but we do appreciate that you give us some of your time so um hopefully that will continue next year but until then merry christmas everybody goodbye merry christmas <laughs>
and this is Smith and Sniff, a podcast in which two friends talk about cars and a little bit too much about shaking Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! Give me Brilliant. an I'm Johnny Smith, and I'm Johnny Smith. I'm Johnny Smith. <laughs> what? <laughs> did I just did too like a newsreader? Fuck you, San Diego. Right, I'm Johnny Smith.